YouTube and welcome to my channel I'm Anna Bella and today I am going to be talking about the sudden trend for biographical documentaries. They're everywhere, whether they be on Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO, all of these other streaming services, the BBC of course, ITV Hub, Britbox, every, everywhere you look biographical documentaries are in. Here are some that I have watched. On Prime, there's been that Judy Broom Forever documentary, which was really, really good. Who would have thought Judy Broom would be running a banned bookstore in her 80s? I'm shockingly not surprised by that. But it's interesting. The Most Beautiful Boy in the World. Another one from Netflix. Lewis Capaldi. Andy Warhol Diaries. Gaga, Five Foot Two. Jim and Andy, about when Jim Carrey um, played Andy. Kaufman and how that film so we've got a film about an actor portraying a real life person and how that went yeah Arnold which is the three part series on Netflix at the moment about Arnold Schwarzenegger you've got the bodybuilding episode you've got the acting episode you've got his politics episode very very good very very good emotional resilience that's all I'm going to say about Arnold do check it out you've got senior which is about um Oh my goodness, Robert Downey Jr.'s father and his filmmaking and how Robert Downey Jr., how that impacted his own life and how that impacted Iron Man, strangely enough. You've got Pamela Anderson's one, Pamela, a love story. You've got Anna Nicole, You Don't Know Me, which kind of sums up these documentaries, to be absolutely honest. We don't know these celebrities very well. We have to rely on the media who hound and misinterpret. So these biographical documentaries allow that particular person to tell their side of the story, both the good and the bad. Arnold is a classic example. He leaves no stone uncovered in that. He explains about how he grew up and what happened to his family and why he felt that he needed to move to America, as well as his bodybuilding work, as well as his acting work about his family um, and about his politics. So. That was a classic example and very streamlined, which pretty much sums up Arnold. I love the structure of that. I thought that was really well done. But that's Arnold to a T. Very, very succinct. All of these biographical documentaries have allowed public figures who may or may not have been controversial to tell their side of the story in their own voice for the first time. And I think one of the reasons for that is streaming. Streaming services are exclusive. You can't just click on your television and watch them. They allow a one-to-one -one situation, sometimes with an interviewer if you're on the BBC or ITV, but quite often not. Um, they just allow the particular figure or figures, as in Harry and Meghan, to tell their story, whether it's a whining complaint or whether it's um, a harsh story, like what happened to Pamela Anderson and the infamous sex tape. Um, or what happened to Anna Nicole Smith and what led her to her tragic end, but why? And other people, and it also allows the people that were supporting these public figures to tell their side of the story, or as much as they feel comfortable telling their side of the story, like the whole Bob Ross fiasco, because that's another one. So it allows people to tell their story before they die, particularly with Robert Downey Jr.'s father senior, because unfortunately he has passed and without these documentaries particularly these bi biographical ones we wouldn't have that person or person's own voice on record I've just watched Circus of Books which is about the LGBT plus bookstore and the reasons why that is important to document and other things and it's interesting that the runners of it were like but why do you want this then they're like because it's important history if we don't document it now we will lose it because at the end of this particular documentary the store does close but we actually needed to know the history of it and why it was so important because obviously we've got the internet and we can just google whatever now um but the certain things like bookstores and when face-to-face -face communication was more important or when you just had to go to a payphone to talk to somebody and say I'm going to be in the town centre at 12.30 I'm going to wait until 12.45 for you to get there because that's what you had to do because you didn't have a mobile phone there was no other way of doing it you had to just wait at the town in the town centre for that person to turn up and if they turned up 
you know, at 12.45, you knew that they were coming. You'd actually give people 15 minute leeway because they could have had a car accident. They could have forgot their glasses. They could have had to go back home and change their shoes for whatever. So face-to-face -face interactions were far more important. And weirdly enough, places of worship were far more important because of that, because people knew, ah, oh, Sunday I'm going to see so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so there. I can catch up with them because you didn't have the WhatsApp group or the Facebook group. That's going off topic, but it actually is really important to these biographical documentaries and why they're so important. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in his 70s. If he doesn't tell his story now, like his rise as a bodybuilder, his rise as an actor, his rise as a politician, he never will. Because by the time he feels that he wants to do it, he perhaps hasn't got the physical ability or he's crumbled mentally and he won't be able to. Doing it in his 70s now is like his last chance. Also, it gets some of these people extra money in their, for their old age because whatever event caused them to be famous has happened and now, you know, older millennials or younger millennials, Generation Z, Generation Alpha have got no way of getting that information because they weren't there. They weren't there when Princess Diana had a car crash. Um, they perhaps were under five when the Twin Towers collapsed, so they need a documentary explaining that to them and other tragic incidents that have become a mainstay of popular consciousness for whatever reason or why Michael Jackson's death is controversial because a lot of young people now want to know more about that because they were under eight at the time that it happened but Michael, but they've heard Michael Jackson's music, they want to know that. It's why Elvis Presley um, we had that lovely film by Baz Luhrmann, Elvis, explaining that. Because the 1950s is a long time ago now. I mean, let's face it, Pokemon came out in the 90s. That is now a long time ago. The 80s is a long time ago. The 70s for Judy Bloom books. It was interesting at the end of the Judy Bloom documentary on Amazon Video and Amazon Exclusive, on Amazon Prime. I mean, how many times are we going to say Amazon? Get over myself. It was interesting what they said about young adult fiction. Young adult fiction is sort of like from 13 to 39, which is a vast age range. I don't know why it's classed as young adult fiction, because teenage fiction, the band is too wide and doesn't include university students, as we all know. Well, in the UK, you graduate at 21. Obviously, in America, you graduate at 22 because they do four-year degrees. UK, just three-year degrees. Um, at the end of that, they said that a young person who picks up a book that is 10 years older than them, so that book was made 10 years ago, they're reading historical fiction. So when they're reading um, Little Johnny Switches on the Torch, they're not thinking of a handheld torch, they're thinking of a smartphone with a torch app. Or one of the ring telephones that you, you know, you dial the number, you go round like that and then you put it to your ear and then you say, hello. They have no experience of that. So if you're reading a book that's 10 years old, and it could be a children's book, it could be a picture book like The Hungry Caterpillar, or it could be Forever by Judy Bloom, or Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, or Fudge, or The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is over 10 years old. Um, any book like that, or even Tracy Beaker. Tracy Beaker is classed as historical fiction, because if you give that to an eight-year-old now, that was written when? And even Harry Potter, because Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is 20 years old. That is historical fiction. That's why it's being pulled apart by the current generation because they're like, well, this is very traditional in its thinking and it presents bigotry versus more bigotry. It's, you know, how does this work? And I'm like, because the books are old. And the time it was written, that's why Section 28 is a really important piece of legislation for everybody to understand why LGBTQ issues could not be talked about in the mainstream. Because they weren't allowed to, because you get prosecuted at school, at council, as a police officer, or a doctor. You had to speak in gay ease code to get round this. It was there, but it was not there, if that makes sense. Particularly in England and the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, Section 28 is a really important piece of legislation it's now been repealed, but if you didn't grow up around it or grow up through it, you don't understand because it affected what authors could write about. I mean, J.K. Rowling was flying very close to the wind when she put in about Geller and Dumbledore having a relationship. It's all indirect. It's all like that because that was the only way that she could do it um, in the books, which at the time was edgy. Now it's nothing because... We've got equal marriage in the UK. We call same-sex marriage equal marriage. 
that's just the way it is. But that's a really important fact. I mean, if it's like that with books and today's generation, what is it also going to be like with anything else? That's why these biographical documentaries are so important, um, I think, going forward, because it allows all of these public figures who, let's face it, are not going to live forever to tell their side of the talk side of the story and to get one last pot of cash not that I'm jaded or cynical but it's really important that I think we start putting these to film because a book can take five years to make a documentary some of these documentaries particularly thanks to covid um it's actually allowed people to document their lives and to get them out maybe two years of planning and then one year to film if that makes sense Hope you've enjoyed this rather long uh, explanation on the rise of biographical documentaries on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, on all of these streaming services and why they're important. Please like, comment and subscribe and look for my next video. Bye! And do check out some bio biographical documentaries. The Andy Warhol Diaries was particularly good. The Lewis Capaldi one was really good. I wanted to review all these. I'm not. I'm just going to explain that they're out there. Watch them. It allows the figure to tell their story in their own words. Thanks for the support and don't forget to click the notification um, bell for my next video. Thank you very much. Bye.